Welcome to live stream number 182. Today's topic is how to model and render a iPhone charger. Now, the clock is ticking. <laughs> we got about a minute and a half. If you're watching the recording, I don't blame you to, uh, to fast forward. It's just a minute and a half. But we're just gonna give a chance for people to get in here into uh, the live stream. I just want an opportunity to thank you for uh, taking time. I can see we got Norris 3D printing here. Thank you so much for taking the time. I'm also gonna to try to update the Facebook. We should be on both platforms, YouTube and Facebook. Um, so today's topic is modeling up an iPhone charger, which is one of these small, uh, yours, if you're in Europe, probably looks a little bit different with the plugs, uh, but something uh, like this. And the main reason I wanna do this is I wanna share with you my best rendering tip. Um, I've done a couple of live streams before with some rendering that wasn't so successful because my um, my stream, I think, was kind of like bogging down. We're going to test that today in the end. I can see we already got a bunch of people in here. Absolutely appreciate it. Uh, let's see here on the... On the uh, Facebook. See if you guys are here too. Absolutely appreciate it, guys. It looks like it. Oof, that's good stuff. All righty. So, uh, as we're counting down here, 15 seconds left. David, Frank, Mike, all you guys, I really uh, appreciate it. Uh, don't forget down in the description area, my email address with any future topics you would like to see. Also, the link for any of your friends in Toronto. Want to come out to a Fusion 360 event there? Don't forget that. Clock is ticking down. Let's get let's get into it. So let me just get rid of the clock here. One, two, three, and uh, we should be good to go. Hi everybody! Thank you so much for joining me today for live stream number 182. My name is Lars Christensen, and this is just an attempt to add a little bit more value to your Fusion 360 experience. It is Monday. It is July 2nd. We're already there. It is hot here in upstate New York. I can tell you. I'm sweating a little bit here after I turn the uh, air conditioner off. want to show you quickly uh, what we are going to somewhat uh, model up today. This is a rendered, re rendered? This is a rendered image. Um, I just want to give you, maybe not the best one you've ever seen. That's okay. I can live with that. <laughs> But I want to share with you uh, kind of two things today. I got the request to model up a iPhone charger, kind of a cube. Like I said, if you're in Europe, yours probably looks a little bit different with the plugs and stuff. But And if you are a experienced CAD modeler, today it's not going to be very advanced. Um, so we'll say that it never is. <laughs> That's okay. But just kind of like talk you through modeling this cube up. Um, but then I want to share with you uh, my favorite rendering tip, and um, it's a quick, easy one, not uh, not very hard. So enough of this. This is where we kind of want to end up. Um, yeah, nothing to wait for. Let's just close this down and uh, get into uh, to Fusion 360 again. Thank you so much for uh, for watching these live streams. I am going to start out with a brand new sketch and I'm going to sketch here on the front face. Hit the S key and you get this little menu here. Um, I like uh, the center rectangle. Now, this was an enhancement in the last um, in the last release. So the S key have been there. Little menu that pops up. But to add things to this one here, if we go up here to the sketch and we go to the rectangle or there we have the same center rectangle. Now, if you hover over and you click on the three dots, that's where you will see that we can pin it right to that shortcut key. So this is the same one as hitting the S key and click on it there. All right, I just kind of like put a pair of earners on one of these iPhone chargers. Like again, depending on what country you're in, they might look a little bit different. Here in the US, they are 26 by 26 millimeters. Hit enter to that and we get a little rectangle. We can add some fills to this part. Now there's kind of two ways you can add a fillet. You can either add a fillet inside of the sketch, as we're gonna do, or as a separate 
um, a separate feature afterwards. Um, when do you use which one? Well, if you know that your fillet is not going to be part of a design change later on, if you're pretty sure that you know whatever radius you put on there is never going to change, I like to use the fillet in the sketch. But if it's something I know standing in front of the customer, they might come and uh, say, hey, what if we change that fillet? Then I like to do it as a feature. That's my rule. I'm gonna make these three millimeters not really, not really that uh, important. With this outer shape done, um, if you are looking, at least on the um, American version, you will see that it, I think you can see it, it's kind of like gray in the center. It's white on the outside, it's kind of like a white shell, and then it is um, gray in the, in the center there. And I'm gonna model this up as a multi-body component. Now I'm planning on doing a live stream this week talking about the difference between components, bodies, and rule number one, but not right now. I'm just gonna do this O for offset. And uh, remember that you can turn the chain on here, so that will let you select the whole thing. And I'm just gonna offset this one 1.6 millimeters. Boom, like that. And then we can extrude this. And I'm gonna hit Q for press pull. And um, you can either go plus, I like, for some reason, this is where I wanna end it up, so I'm gonna go minus, minus 28. It doesn't really matter. Um, and you will see that the appearance of this is, well, it is metal uh, by default. If you go and click on your name, go to preferences, notice that in the material section, you can change all this in here, what you want the appearances to be. By default, it is metal. I'm gonna right click, go to appearances, and um, you will see in here that we have paint. And I'm just going to go down and find a white one. And you can actually just drag it right up on top of the default one here. The whole thing uh, turned white. And there you go. Now we kind of like got it out of shell. Let's fill uh, the center up. Um, here is something that maybe, maybe some of you guys who are more experienced didn't know. Check this out. I'm going to go and open a new sketch. I'm gonna go and select that front face we had before. Now, you might think that you need to project edges, but actually we don't. I'm just gonna literally hit Q for press pull, and the software already know that there is a center edge in there. Ah, oops, if I select it. Did you know that? Minus 28. Now, here comes something important. If we're leaving it at join, it's gonna join the whole thing together. Let me just hit okay. See how I kind of like join the whole thing together. If I go back down and I right click and hit edit, and I change that to new body and hit okay, then you will see it kind of separated the two. So now we have two bodies, and that actually looks pretty close to the gray for right now. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it. It's default metal, right? If we go back, right click, appearances, or steel, you'll see that it's still set in steel. It added a new one in there besides the one we just dragged up. Um, that might be an issue when we render it. Now we're gonna make the, um, we're gonna make the USB port. Here I'm gonna show you a couple of things that you may or may not know either. Open a new on the back face here. And uh, I like to just open up a two point rectangle and just get something close. D for dimension. And I'm gonna make this one 13, hit enter. I'm gonna make this one 5.5 millimeters. I know from the top edge of the cube and down to the top edge of here, I mess it with the verniers, there's 6.5. And then I know that I want this rectangle to be in the center of this cube here. How do you do that? What I will do is hit alpha line, hover over the top edge till I get a triangle. That means midpoint, triangle meets midpoint. Click, drag a line vertical up here and just double click to end it. Now this line is not gonna do anything other than as a reference line. In older CAD software, we would have to turn into a construction line. We don't have to do that inside of Fusion, so we can just leave it here. And I'm gonna use my favorite uh, constraint, what is symmetry. Click on symmetry, select this point, this point, and then that line we created, and boom, now that is, uh, symmetrical with that line. Hopefully you learned something. Press Q for press pull. 
And I'm just gonna go again minus, in this case, minus 12 millimeters, hit enter. Now we kind of have the opening, but if you ever looked at a uh, USB port, there's kind of like a little pin sticking in. So let's draw that one on the back face. Start a new sketch on that back face in there. Okay. Now remember how I used the offset before, O for offset. If I have the chain selection turned on, I get the whole thing. If I don't have it on, if I turn it off, then I only get one line. So just be aware of these check boxes over here. That can be kind of handy. I really only want this line right here. And then I'm going to do another two point rectangle and just sketch on that line there. I know that the width of this one, D for dimension, the width of uh, this to this is going to be 1.75 like that. And uh, we could use the same trick we did before with the symmetrical or drawing a line up the midpoint. But I just want to show this other trick. If I click here to this edge, we get a dimension. I'm going to make this one 0.5. Nothing fancy. Now, I could also go over and do another one on the other side. And I could type in 0.5 here, right? Now, we kind of have two dimensions. But did you know that you could just double click on the second dimension instead of typing anything in? click on the first dimension, you'll see that now that gets a D value. And that means when I hit enter, that this dimension FX is following this dimension. So now if I change this to one, you'll see that that follows over there. Just another little trick that you may or may not be aware of. This is fully defined. I'm going to hit Q and I'm going to extrude that out. This one is only going to go out 10. Okay. Looks pretty good. Now, uh, this one has a chamfer on it. Let's go in and click Modify. Click Chamfer. Select the four edges here. Okay, like that. And I'm going to make it 0 0.35. Now, if you... Uh, maybe not. 0 0.35. Now, if you have never used, um, uh, never dug deep into the chamfer tool before, you maybe didn't know that there is different options in here. So we can actually go, because if you're looking at the chamfer inside of a, of a USB port, it's actually not 45 degrees. You can change either distance and angle, or in this case, distance, two distances. So 0.35, and we can make the other one three, right? So now it gets a tapered option. So that was right inside the standard chamfer option. Just want to make sure you, you know that. Now this one in here is also white. I'm going to right click, go to appearances. And uh, then we could go in and go from bodies and components down to it only affects faces. And we can drag that white on to, uh, to these faces here. And if you have a hard time kind of selecting faces, well, listen to my good old friend. Paul, who would have said, just zoom closer, dude. So just zoom in. If you have a hard time picking something, you're probably not close enough. Zoom in, make this white here. Go over on the other side and these here. All right, we're 11 minutes in, and uh, I would say we're just about halfway done uh, with uh, this cube here. This is all bodies, uh, nothing. I'm not trying to be too fancy with this. But somebody asked me, a couple of people asked me to model one of these up. And I thought, hey, why the heck not? not? And then I'm going to show you my, my favorite rendering tip. Last thing we need are the two, I don't know, prongs or things that goes into uh, to the outlet. Um, so let's see here. Let's start a uh, construction plane on the outside. And I just measured that that was minus 5.5. So from the outside and in, so you can create these construction planes so you can sketch on them. I'm gonna go ahead and start a new sketch on that plane. And again, if I'm moving too fast for you, just rewind, right? Um, show you a little trick here. If I do another two point um, rectangle, I'm just gonna place it out somewhere out here. Make sure it snaps into the edge like that there. I'm gonna give it a D for dimension. I'm gonna make this six. I'm going to make this 16. And then notice this, that right now this thing floats up and down. 
be aware of there is that triangle midpoint relationship over here in uh, in the constraint menu. So midpoint of this line to so the midpoint of this line. Boom, that is tied in. Oh, that is somewhat useful. Uh, alpha line, and I'm just gonna make an angle line up to about here. D for dimension again, I'm gonna make this one 15 degrees. I'm gonna make this one, I don't remember, 1.25 maybe. Ah, that looks pretty good. Um, and then, I'll um, show you another little trick here. Alpha line, we talked about construction lines before. I'm just gonna draw a line in here, it doesn't really matter about the length. Again, in the old software, we would make this a construction line. We don't have to do that in Fusion. And inside of the sketch menu, we can mirror. So we can say, select this line, mirror it over that line we just created, and boom, now we got that one down there. Last thing is C for circle. Just gonna make sure I'm snapping into this line right here. Draw a three millimeter circle. Now, right now it's blue. We need to make it black because it can spin around here. So D for dimension from here to here. And let's make it three. That's all I'm gonna do on the prong that is now sitting out here. Hit Q for press pull and just select that inner section there. And I'm gonna make this one 1.4 millimeters. Okay right there now i did do go quick because if i go back in and edit it again when i hit enter that became a join what means that this joined that centerpiece we did i would probably actually make this a new body instead because just like i mirrored the sketch in the sketch before we can mirror in the feature also select bodies select this one mirror it over that center origin of our part that is cutting right through like that and uh, we now have the prongs what is prongs made out of well it is copper many times nickel plated right click appearances and check this out if you go under metal did you know that they actually have nickel in here polished nickel would have known drag that over there and uh, that is about how i would model up a cube for an iphone charger so if that was all you're looking for 16 minutes in boom that is done somebody just asked me how i like the heat i can tell you okay if you uh if you looked at me right now i am sweating with my uh air conditioned turned off Hitting 90 degrees here in the office, that's nice. <laughs> uh, but I wanna go on here and say two things. First of all, you will see if you go and look at the bodies. I do have four bodies in here. I wanna do a video and talk a little bit about bodies and components, try to do that later this uh, this week. But if I was just, if you ask me how do you model something up, then uh, that is how I, I would do it. And if you were looking, um, because you were looking to do something fancy like this rendering that we're gonna end up having in two seconds. I'm gonna just show you my best tricks with rendering here in a minute. Uh, then that would be fine enough. If you were looking for something for a catalog or something like that, uh, then, um, then doing it with the multiple bodies will be perfectly fine. Now, if I was creating this one, so it had to be sent out and be manufactured, um, <laughs> it's probably in China somewhere, then I this would not be the way I would, would model it up. All right. Enough of that. Um, let's just see here if we can do uh, we can do some uh, some uh, some renderings. So with that, let's go here and uh, go in and talk about rendering this part. I'm going to show you uh, my favorite in just a second. We're going to click render here, and then we get into uh, the rendering environment. I've done other live streams on this. Um, my last live stream that I had an issue was because I hit in canvas what is a rendering i want to try that just in one second but before we get there um let's just talk a little bit about um appearances so if we click on this appearance the beats ball you will see we get a chance to redo some of the appearances and i actually know that this metal probably not going to look right 
Um, if I do hit this in canvas render, and this is maybe where everything freezes up, I am not sure. Um, I'm going to just quickly look on my screen here and see if things are well, But this, link, I'm not going to, I'm going to turn it off again. So if you, uh, if you're still with me, then we're not going to hit, uh, we're not going to hit this one right now. I'm looking at my YouTube just to see if, uh, if it's going to come back on again. <laughs> That is one of the, uh, that is one of the issues. Just give it a second. I had to try it uh, with this new stream. Uh, yeah, I know, Devin. Uh, I am hoping that it will come back on. I'm still streaming. If not, then this is going to be part of, of the recording that I'm going to be putting up on, uh, on the video. It doesn't look like it want to come back, does it? Oh no, did I kill, did I completely kill it? Let me see here, what is it doing over on, what is my friends on Facebook seeing right now? I saw Devin posted something about, about the stream getting killed. Oh, Steve, you got a warning sign if you delete it. All right. This might just turn into becoming a recording from here on. Oh, somebody says that it's okay here. All right, uh, I'm going to continue going. So this is the problem when I'm streaming and I hit this in canvas. What in canvas will do is it will give you a rendering of the part and give you a really like it starts pixelating on your stream on your screen and, and you can kind of get an idea about what the finished result will look like. One of the things you will see if I did hit this rendering button is that where we left it as metal. See, when we were modeling this up in the model environment, um, this looked pretty gray as metal, good enough, but actually in, um, when you get into the, to the rendering environment, it will look like metal and not gray. So what I probably would end up doing in here was actually going in and uh, go in and find, let's just go back into paint and I will go in and find the gray appearance and drag that up on uh, the metal one. So that will actually become uh, gray and not metal experience. I had to test it out. Hope everything is okay. I hope we're back. Um, I'm just gonna continue. And if this is totally not visible, then uh, man. Uh, but one of the things I would show you in here is that many people at this point, when it comes to setting this up, uh, when you go and render this part here, it looks a little dull. It doesn't look right. Um, and a lot of people have reached out to me and says, how do I set up my render so it looks better? How do I set it up so it looks more real, I guess? Uh, and I'm opening up this picture I did of this cube before the live stream. How do I get something that looks a little bit more natural uh, in the environment? And you will see that if you go into Fusion, if you go into the next light bulb in here, right now we have it set to solid color. And uh, the only way in here, if you just straight out of the box, if you go into the environment and you go into the environment li uh, library over here is to start applying some of these real images backgrounds and they look great. Um, you know, I think the plaza looks great if you have a car or something, but uh, normally a um, normally a iPhone charger, unless somebody dropped it, you wouldn't find it on a field. Uh, so here is the trick that I will normally use. I will actually use a standard appearance, not one of these photorealistic ones. And um, I actually kind of like something like cool lights is actually okay, or sharp lights is actually fine. But what I will do is I will save my part, just like you see here. So I'm just gonna go out of the modern environment. I'm gonna save it to my library, so let's call this iPhone charger, save it, okay? Then I will create a brand new file. And what this is gonna be, is this gonna be a scene um, for my iPhone charger, so a brand new file. And I would literally model something up that's gonna be a table, so start a new sketch on the top level here. And I'm gonna use the same one we did before, uh, so we could use that center rectangle. 
and uh, I'm gonna do this, you could do this in meters, for example. So you can make something like that is one amp by one amp. So like now we're talking meters, right? Like huge, hit enter to that. Whoops, I didn't get it on the bottom, did I? One amp, that will be meters, hit enter. And uh, let's extrude that downward. So I'm just making kind of like a big table right here. And it doesn't really matter how uh, how thick you make it. That is going to be my bottom for the thing to rest on. And then I'm going to make a background. So I'm going to open a sketch on the back side here. And I'm literally going to go in and select my two-point rectangle. And just draw something up that looks like this. Doesn't really matter. Q. Get that some thickness. Okay, so we don't have anything fancy here. Now I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna call this background. And then I'm gonna go out to our iPhone shots. I'm gonna right click on it and say insert into current design. That's gonna come in right there. Now, of course, we made everything so big. So, I mean, this looks a little crazy. I'm gonna move it a little bit closer to the wall. And then I start placing, whoops, I must have extruded that up. I start um, placing this, I mean, the best thing would actually be if we placed it right on here. So that's probably 10, did I place it? All right, I made that wrong. I wanna make sure that it's right about where, where the bottom is here. Um, and place it where we want it in the view. And I'm not sure this is gonna be completely perfect. Now, a couple of things to know when you're making an image, and this is just like, if you're a photographer, you're gonna laugh at me, but if you are a rookie like me when it comes to a lot of renderings, a couple of, of tips when you're trying to place your rendering. One is don't try to be um, isometric like this. Try to see if you can come down almost like in eye level a little bit. Also, don't place your object right in the center. Try to be like there's something called lower third. So like in the lower area of the screen a little bit. And try to do this in this area right here. Kind of like try to, to place it like this. Okay. Now, when we go in to uh, the render environment, you can kind of see how it's going to be placed. And now this doesn't look too pretty. But now I'm going to apply some appearances to those faces in here. So we could go in here and uh, select something like a wood for the, the table. Now, I don't, I'm going to select unfinished because I actually don't want the table to be the vocal point and I don't want um, it to have like a shine to it. So I'm going to go to unfinished and you could select something like walnut and drag that in on that background there. And um, the backsplash or the back wall here if I go back and I open up my image from before, you should be able to see this. Here's my image. I hope the stream didn't break. Um, you will see that I don't get any shine down here. And then instead of using a white wall, because that would kind of like interfere with the cube, um, I did place a white paint on it, like this up here. But then I actually went in and edited it. So I right clicked and edited it, edit, edited it. I don't know if you say that. And I kind of grabbed the cursor here and I kind of made a little bit, I think you would call that eggshell white. Okay, close that down. So again, I'm trying to place myself somewhat eye level as if you kind of was down. And I should probably made it a little bit longer so I don't get this, uh, this over here. But that was about where I placed the other one. Um, and again, if I hit the in canvas, that will give me a little bit better um, notification about this. And then you will see the last thing I did that I just wanna show here before we end. Let me open the picture again. Um, I added another thing in this image looking like a wire. And I added that in here just to kind of enhance the the idea of the view of the of the charger by itself and again this is not the best image i made this image in two minutes 
Um, but the idea of creating a background that kind of resembles a wall and gives it a little bit of distance and, and a, a bottom that gives it a floor to sit on and then adding something else. If you're watching my other live stream on rendering, I placed actually an, a 2D print underneath it. Now to create this uh, phone cable, all I did, and again, remember, if you're talking rendering, in rendering environment, it's allowed to, che to cheat. Literally what I did was in this assembly, I opened a sketch on this top face here. So there's our view cube. And I went over here and I literally just created a spline that I kind of like just made way too big, but I just wanted something in the screen here. I made sure that this handle here were horizontal. So I knew that they were sitting on the origin. Stop sketch. And then I went in and created another sketch on that plane. Zoom in here. So I know my spline starts right there. Hit C for circle, draw a circle, and a um, an iPhone cable is, oh, now I forgot, <laughs> let me just measure it, 2.8, 2.8 millimeters, 2.8, like that, and, uh, you know, with this here, I could literally just go in and say, let's make this tangent to this edge, and uh, let's make this point vertical to that point okay it's hard to see right now but if we go in and do a sweep there and use the path as our connection in there uh -huh. like that as a new body right now we kind of get something and uh, then again, if we right click and go into appearances and throw that white on it, it actually probably has to be an, a brand new white, not an eggshell white. Okay. Now, when we go back in to place this where we had it before, something like that. That's probably good enough. Go into the rendering environment. Now you will see that cable and you could play with that spline however you kind of want that uh, placed. But that gives you that kind of, I don't know, it, it sets the picture up. So don't place the, the thing you want to render right in the center um, and, and add something else. This is my, my best rendering tip. That is how I make quick renders that looks like this, make them in minutes, but makes it look, looks a little bit, um, a little bit um, more real. And of course, when I, I, like, I should click in Canvas Render, but we know it stops the stream. When you go to Render, you have, two diff you have th some different options. Uh, you can set what size. I did mine in 1080, 1920. I use Cloud Renders, which is gonna cost me two Cloud Credits. You have uh, Cloud Credits when you install Fusion 360. You can buy more if you need to. I could, of course, hit Local. And then it will not cost me anything, but it will take uh, a little bit longer uh, to render. Um, but this was the finished image. And like I said, this is not, I don't think this is the best thing uh, I've ever rendered. Um, but, you know, I hope that um, as a live stream for uh, 30 minutes on a Monday, that you at least got something out of this. And I'm, again, I'm sorry that when I hit the full render body, that... Uh, that you uh, that it froze a little bit, but this is the finished image. I hope this was useful, man. It's like 92 degrees <laughs> inside of my office right now. Whoo, it's hot. This is gonna make me finish my live streams, talks, and wrapping it up a lot quicker. I hope this was useful. <sighs> I need some water. Until the next time. Oh, and I should say that on Wednesdays there is no live stream because in the United States it's a holiday. But tomorrow there'll be a live stream. We'll do one Thursday. We'll do one Friday. Friday's cam. Did you uh, watch the video that I posted uh, Saturday on how I made that sign right there? If you haven't checked that out, go and click on the videos and check that out. If you like this, thumbs up. If you don't, be honest. Thumbs down. I want, uh, I want your honesty. 
something uh, just a while since we have modeled something up and I hope that the rendering tips at least gives you a, a little bit more of uh, courage to go in and do some rendering if you haven't already touched it. Just a little bit more value to your Fusion experience. It is Monday. It is hot. I'm sweating. 182 is over. Until till tomorrow, have an awesome, awesome day. Take care, folks.